Hello, everyone. Good evening, Facebook. Good evening, YouTube. This is Save Sex and Save Sex for all three different platforms. So join me, tune in. How are you guys doing? We're on another live tonight for um, soul care and adding to your faith, molding into the truth. And we're talking about discipline and focus. Discipline and focus. And it was... It's something because we I talked about this to um, another uh, co-worker today while at work and we're talking about discipline and we're talking about focus and patience and self-control. And so it was a really good um, conversation. It really was. And um, uh, he hit some pointers and I hit some pointers as well. And like I said, it was a really good conversation and, you know, he's talking about what methods to go by and what what outlet we can use when when we have to turn the other cheek. We have to express self-control. And that can, you know, sometimes we just may want to not go off to the point to where, you know, we're doing anything violent. But we want to, you know, at least just go off for a date and tell that person how we feel and tell the person what they did to hurt our feelings and, you know, stuff like that. And so it was a really good conversation. And so, you know, in molding yourself, letting God mold you into the truth, right, is going to make you also learn and heed carefully to instruction on how to maintain and grow into cultivating the fruits of the spirit, amen, and letting it grow in you, right? So that's what we're talking about this evening, y'all. I'm so glad that you're here. Tune in, and um, we're going to pray, and we're going to get started. So this is uh, this week's Bible study about adding to your faith, adding to your faith, as well as uh, cultivating uh, and heeding to the instructions, of the father man so let's go into a word of prayer father i thank you god for tonight's bible study god i pray lord that as we dig deeper into your word and as we get close to you lord we just ask lord that you know as you know this is a way of um suffering god we our faith does not get stronger so that we do not suffer. It does not get stronger um, just so that we're exempt from suffering, but um, it gets stronger so that we can cultivate balance and comprehension and sound mind, God, and um, have a controlled spirit and also while cultivating that, those qualities and those traits, God, it brings us closer and closer to you in everything that we do in every area of our lives, God. So we just pray, Lord, for self-discipline and restraint, God. And Lord, we pray that the discipline becomes stronger than the desire that resistance turns into surrender. So Father God, we thank you, Lord. We ask Lord that you Have your way tonight in this Bible study, God, that you speak through me, Father, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, that the ones who are tuning in, God, that they see you in the name of Jesus, God, and there's something that would be said, Lord, to speak to their hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So again, how are you guys doing? I pray that all is well with you. Welcome to... Save sex, not safe sex. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, um, I'm Anastasia. Um, and I'm just so glad to be here. Just so glad to be here. So glad to be in the number. I'm just so grateful. So we're talking about when discipline becomes stronger than the desire. And we can switch that up and twist it and say when the, the desire becomes stronger than the actual discipline, right? And we know that, well, I know 
and anyone who has played sports, uh, any curricular activities, they know uh, firsthand what it's like to uh, practice, to um, stay determined, and to um, stay focused, right, on the sport and stay focused on your part that you play. Amen. And being an, um, a former track runner, uh, I was a sprinter. And not only did we have to focus on being fast, but we had to focus on the synthesis of the, our form, the force, and also the endurance, right? And sometimes we kind of had to switch it up in practice. We had to, you know, uh, do some long distance running just so our lungs can be conditioned, you know, to sprint, you know, or even have the right type of form uh, to have the right time to even sprint like a 300 meter hurdle or a 400 meter dash or a 200 meter dash, a 100 meter dash. And 200 meter dash was my race, right? The four by one, the four by two. I dislike the 400. That was not my thing. Um, but, um, but, you know, it took it took um, a lot of determination and focus to keep my grades up to make sure that I could, you know, qualify to run, you know, um, to also stay determined, come to practice on time, listen, heed instruction, uh, work hard, stay motivated, you know, getting along with others and showing championship, showing a uh, good championship to others, right? Um, so it's basically having a sound mind. A sound mind can be balance. It can be comprehension, willingness, uh, and having an idea, having self, uh, self-control and being reasonable, right? Um, in the scripture, I believe it's, let me look it up real quick. Where's the second Timothy, you see here, I believe. I'm just typing all kinds of wrong things in here. Oh, my house getting crossed or what? Let me see. Okay. Mm. Second Timothy verses one, ver, uh, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse seven. And it says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And some translations, it may say self-control, but it goes hand in hand. Right. Having a sound mind and self-control, it goes hand in hand. Right. Because. Um, if you want to change, it first starts with your mind when you get angry and when you get it first starts with what's in your mind. Right. And how you react or how you respond to something it first starts in your head. You, you think of what to say and do. Right. So having a sound mind is where discipline comes from, your control in self-control, but if you are having a hard time restraining yourself, right, you know that there's something, there's something, there's something wrong, right? Um, it's not, you're not mentally healthy. Amen. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. It says, whoever heeds, whoever heeds, did I write that down? This one I did. Let me see. No, I didn't. Whoever he said means uh, taking in instruction, careful warning uh, to, you know, to warnings and instructions and directions. Uh, basically. Taking in what's being 
said, right? What direction to take. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life. If we are very careful in what instructions been given to us, right? Whether someone tells you the truth about what, about yourself or, okay, because we want to change in our minds, we're saying, okay, I need to listen. I need to take heed at this because um, it's something that's going to help me. The Bible says that that is the path to life when you heed instruction, right? But he who rejects reproof, if you, we are the type of people where people can't tell us anything, that we think we're right about something, that even when the truth comes at us, we, we want to reject that truth or we want to say, okay, well, you know, uh, or arg be argumentative over, over what has been deposited into us. It's not that the person is being negative. It's not that the person is, bring, is bringing evil or negativity into your space. But sometimes we can, we can be exactly how the person is describing us, but we don't want to hear the truth. Well, just like my great-grandmother always used to say, if the truth kill you, then you just got to die. You know. And so a lot of us, we don't want to hear the truth. The truth hurts, right? But we have to get to a point to where we have to stop sugarcoating things for people and we have to stop beating around the bush, right? And how is a person to learn or get better, right? Or even see what type of discord that they are causing, right? If we are still, or if we are sugarcoating things for each other, if we are not telling the truth, how are they to learn? How are they to get better? If we right their wrong, you know, nothing, the, the end result will never be good. Just like it says here, whoever heeds instruction, takes it in uh, carefully, any warning or direction, instruction is on the path to life, right? But just like we've always been told, there's a stop sign down that road somewhere, right? But whoever heeds instruction is a path to life. And to and to be alive is a is a, is is a is a is vital. It's a good thing to be to have life. You're alive. You're breathing. You're moving. Right. I saw this one commercial where, and that's why I I'm relating this to exercise. And you know, because we have to learn how to exercise our faith. This is soul care adding to your faith. We have to learn how to exercise it and what to exercise it with. And I saw this one commercial where I think it was a, a, a commercial of a movie or a trailer or, um, or something of the sort. And she was moving. You know, she's uh, oh, it was a YouTube video. She was moving. And, at, you know, as she was moving, you know, each day she adds more onto her uh, routine or her exercise regimen. And she's studying you know, making her body move so that it don't get stuck or stiff or, you know, anything like that, adding movement to her body each and every day. You know, when you move around, you move your body around, things in your in your gut and in your stomach go to moving around. So that keeps you from being, if you know, I, I don't, I pray I don't, I'm trying not to be too graphic, but it keeps you from being stopped up or constipated. So when you move around, you know, at the, your joints get to, you know, being loose. And even even in your mind, it, 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 it you know, it brings some type of uh, uh, chemical balance in your mind when you exercise and you move your body and your bones and your muscles get to get a, a good working out. Right. So she does this. She does this each and every day. Right. So. When we are taking care of what we need to take care of, there's life there, right? There's life. We are, like I said, we're breathing, we're moving, we are uh, adapting, and we are thinking better. And, you know, all of these good things, when we heed to instruction, when we, when we, um, when we take in the truth, no matter if it hurts us, right? And verse 18 it says the one who conceals, conceals is hide. Conceal is, is, is something that's, that hasn't been revealed, right? 
Like if you put on concealer, you know, you you trying to hide the dark circles and dark spots and all of that kind of stuff. So you put on concealer to hide that, right? So it says the one who conceals, which is hides hatred, has lying lips. If you have hatred for somebody, you're steady lying in their face, right? You may say out of your lips, which are lies, that everything is good, that we can start over, that, you know, you've never done anything to me, that, you know, uh, 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 you know, we need to come together more. We need to talk more. But you, 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 I mean, those are lies coming out of your lips. And it says, whoever utters slander is a fool. If you slander someone's name, right? When we're talking about discipline here, and we're talking about uh, making it become stronger than the desire. The desire is a want of uh, something to be pleasing or, and, and, and that's something when a person when a person's desire, it pleases them to hurt other people. It pleases them. That's their desire is to um, basically sear someone else's heart. That's burning someone else's heart, branding it, you know, hurting it, you know, breaking it and tearing it apart. And that that's something when a person has that type of hatred in their heart. Right. But in the Bible, it calls them a fool. Amen. It calls them a fool. And they have lying lips, right? My, my. So mentally, they're not there. They aren't there. So you have self-discipline, sound mind. That's restraint, willpower. It demonstrates the fruits of the spirit. Amen. This is self-discipline, self-control. Self-control goes hand in hand with self-discipline, right? In Hebrews 5 and 8. Let's go there. I think this was before Titus or after Titus. I think it's after Titus. Yep, there it is. 5 and 8. And it says, although he was a son, this is talking about Jesus, although Jesus was a son, that he learned obedience, right? Obedience is what? Compliance. You comply to an order. You obey in order. You obey someone of authority, right? Or uh, submission to another's authority. So it says, although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. That is big. And I'm going to go to... I'm going to go into the enduring word. And read the footnote on that because the footnote was fire. The footnote was fire. So I'm going to read that. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Five. Eight. Okay, here we go. All right. It says, um, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. It says, though Jesus was God and is God, right? This is the Trinity. Yet he learned obedience. He learned submission. He learned um, compliance, though he is God and was God. God enthroned in heaven's glory can only experience that's an event happening, a knowledge, learning, studying something, right? It says, by casting off the glory of the throne and humbling himself as Jesus did. So God, enthroned in heaven's glory, can only experience obedience because, you know, Jesus was God and he is God, right? John chapter one, it says, the word, right? The word was God. The word is God. The word was with God. The word is God. So Jesus 
And a lot of people, they don't understand that. They don't understand how come, how one thing can be all three, how one deity can be all three, how there is a trinity. How is it that he's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost? Yep, go to the beginning in Genesis. In Genesis, because it's, it, it speaks about how God, the Father, how when he was creating everything, he was creating the heavens and he was creating everything under the heaven and the earth and all of the, the, the plants and the animals and said, even before he uh, 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 created the seas, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit was hovering over all of the darkness before he even started the creation. The Holy Spirit was hovering over everything. So Jesus was already there before anything was created. Right? And in John chapter 1, it says, let's go there. I'm going to quote it right. It says that in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. The word is Christ Jesus, right? He came down as the word. He is the word, the living word. Amen. That's why it is alive and it is active and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Come on. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So John begins this gospel, this good news, this true story, the word, by using this title, he basically presents Jesus as the personal word of God. Amen. So when it says, let's go back to the footnote in enduring word. So Jesus did not, no, go back, experience God enthroned in heaven's glory can only experience obedience by casting off the glory that he had in heaven. He cast off that glory of the throne and humbling himself, coming down, right? Being meek, being lowly, humbling himself as Jesus did. Jesus did not pass from disobedience to obedience like we do. He had no sin. He never sinned. He didn't pass from disobedience. He didn't pass from a sinful nature to a sinless nature. He was completely sinless. He lived a sinless life from the time of creation. Amen. And it says he learned obedience by actually obeying. That's how he learned obedience. From the time he was a little boy, he knew he knew he was about his father's business. He understood the assignment. From the time he was a little boy, he knew what his assignment was. So it says he learned obedience by actually obeying. Jesus did not learn how to obey, right? Listen to what that said. He learned obedience by actually obeying. He already knew what to do. He predestined obey, being obedient. He predestined it. He already knew what obedience was to his father. Amen. It says Jesus did not learn how to obey. He learned what is involved. Like being active in what uh, partaking in. Right. What's involved in obedience. Right. He learned what was what is involved in obedience. Jesus learned the experience of obedience and part of that learning was enduring suffering. You can't, we can't go through life without suffering. We can't grow or mature without suffering. And if we think that we're getting closer with God without suffering, we can forget it. We have to go through. And if you don't understand what the suffering is or why you're even suffering, what's the meaning of this suffering? You need to talk to God. Talk to him. Most of the time it's because he's getting he's getting you ready for something. Most of the time he's 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 trying to get your attention 
and you and you're focused on something else but he's trying to get your attention are you spending time with him have you how, how long has it been since you read your word how long has it been has, since you prayed how long has it been since you got into your prayer closet and just dove in how long has it been so it says one thing that god enthroned in heaven does not know is the experience of obedience right the happening the event that's one thing that he does not know he doesn't have to experience obedience just like it says in the uh uh uh, uh in the beginning he learned obedience by actually obeying he did not experience obedience he did not pass from disobedience to obedience So enthroned in the heavens, God obeys no one, but all obey him. God obeys nobody. He's God the Father. He's God all by himself. But when he humbled himself and basically enthroned in heaven, stripped off his own glory to come down here, humbled himself, right to teach us the ways his ways of how to be obedient and obey the father that was his main iota his main goal right the angels must have marveled as they saw god the son who added humanity to his deity actually live out obedience i never thought about that never i never thought about that he actually lived out obedience he obeyed in spectacular challenges oh my god he was talked about people were threatening to kill him his life was at risk people didn't like him they talked about him they said he had a demon right the pharisees questioned his 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 uh his power his deity they questioned who he was even the devil came and tested him and and and, and, and tempted him and, and and tempted his power tempted who he was okay if you really who you say you are if you're really the son of god turn these stones into bread if you're really the son of god you will you will uh, bow down and worship me if you're really the son of God cast your foot down onto the stone and it, it but what did Jesus do he obeyed the father right he obeyed the father and he fought back with the word of God it is written that's what he said it is written talk about discipline talk about turning the other cheek letting the devil know right i am who i am i am who i say i am i know who i am right i am that i am it is written man shall not eat by bread alone but by every word that proceeds by every word he is the word by every word of me he was speaking of himself describing himself by every word me by every me by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what we should eat. That soul care. He says should not eat by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is how we feel our spirits. That is how we feel our souls. This is how come so many of us are spiritually hungry and we really don't understand what we need. We really don't understand what it is that we're missing. In this is getting good. As a sprinter, going to the track meets, we knew the style of sprinters, long distance runners. We knew their style so much. 
their form. We knew it so much that when it came to a, a, a track meet and they were sluggish, they were slacking, They we knew that they were messing up during the week. We knew that they, they were doing something, maybe going out or going skating or hanging out the night before the track meet and all of this. We knew that they were doing something they had no business because they're slacking. Their handoffs aren't right. They probably missed a few days of practice or, or something, but they knew that we were about our business because we were disciplined. They knew, see, this is how come it says in the Bible, when Paul told, this is good, when Paul told Timothy, you have to be an example, be an example, right? Your mother, Eunice, and your grandma, they all were examples of the faith. He told him, but be warned, be careful. There will come a time where people will abandon the faith, but you have to be an example of holding on to the faith. Right? We have to keep exercising our faith daily, renewing our mind daily. But going back to what I was saying, when you slacking, like my old coach used to say, we Cadillacking. You know, I slow a Cadillac drive, right? <laughs> it doesn't really pick up speed like that, especially an old one, right? We're Cadillacking. Oh, coach, I'm tired. I, you know, we need to take a break. We need to take a water break. I'm tired. Tired? Tired? Get off my field. Get off my field. I don't, I don't need no complainers on my field. I don't need no complainers. This is how we, this is the type of mentality we need to have in this, in this earthly realm, following God. Complaining, it should never be a part of our lives or our vocabulary. What are we complaining for if we have God? When he said that we, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us power Love and a sound mind, self-control, self-discipline. He gave us that, right? But not a spirit of timidity, not a spirit of fear. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind to deal with everyday life. He gave us peace, right? That peace that, what is it? How does she explain it? That peace that destroys all authority of chaos. So we know we have that. What are we complaining for? When things come about, we need to know whose we are and who we are. We need to know who, what the father will do, what his character is, what he said. Remember his promises. Right? What are you complaining for? But then when you go and you and, and, and you, you know, we're going to these track meets, we're getting spanked, then we complain. But then you're not giving your all in practice. We have to practice this word. We have to put in practice this word, this Bible in everything that it teaches us. We have to put it into practice. Action. It just it just it explains it here. Jesus lived out obedience he lived it out this was his mission to come down was to help us to live out our obedience somebody put that in the chat i am living out my obedience to who to god live it out live it out he obeyed as a child as a teen as a young man, he obeyed privately and he obeyed secretly, right? He obeyed in ordinary life. He obeyed God as father and he obeyed rightfully human authority. Jesus obeyed in all things, even to the end. When he knew he would have to give up his life, when he knew he would have to die for the sins of the whole world, he obeyed. And it wasn't something easy to grasp, right?
we have to apprentice this obedience, this trade until we've learned it. We have to, until we've learned it. Jesus didn't have to learn anything. He didn't have to learn. He didn't have to experience anything, right? He lived it out by what he suffered. Come on. That is so good. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go to Thessalonians 3 and 3. First Thessalonians 3 and 3. It says, that no one be moved by these afflictions. You shall not be moved. My sister just told me that here before I got in the live a few, few hours back. To be steadfast and immovable. You shall not be moved. Keep going. Be steadfast. It's a constant thing, right? That no one be moved by these afflictions. They will come, but we shall not be moved. We should not be moved. We need to be like the tree that's being planted by the rivers of water, right? Just like Timothy. He was young, but he knew that he had to be nourished by the word of God. He knew he had to be nourished in prayer. Paul told him, do not let anyone despise your youth. Do not let anyone do that. But lead by an example. Exercise your faith. You're going to have a lot of people come against you, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk in holiness. Don't be afraid to walk in righteousness. Don't be afraid to follow God. Don't be afraid no matter what people say. Don't be afraid, sis. Don't be afraid. You're saving yourself. Don't be afraid about what people say. Because one thing we have to remember is that when we lay down, I'm not going to put it on the man. When we lay down with that man, you are putting him further and further away from God. Come on. Especially when we know better. If we slipped up just last week, we're pushing that man further and further away from God. Have we even thought about that? Further for the way. Same with the man. We got to take responsibility for something. Same with the man. If he has laid down with a woman just last night, he's pushing, pulling that woman further away from God. Further away. Further away. It says, for you yourselves know that we are destined for this we are destined it says we are destined for this we must not be surprised as believers we must not be surprised when we encounter tribulations and afflictions we must not be surprised jesus was not surprised he was not surprised even in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was not surprised. He was not surprised about what he was to face. He wasn't surprised. This is, my, this is what I must do. This is what I must encounter. This is what I must uh, uh, drink. Even though it's nasty. Even though it's bitter. But this is discipline. He was disciplined and he obeyed the father, even though what was in his cup was wrath and what was in his cup was darkness at that time. He was in a very dark place. But yet he still said, Father, not my will be done. Nevertheless, 
Not my will be done, but let yours be done. How many of us can say that during an affliction or during a tribulation? Lord, however it turns out, let your will be done. Come on. Before my cousin went home to be with the Lord, before she went home to be with the Lord, my aunt had called me that Saturday, that day before she had coded at four that morning. And my cousin, my uh, my other cousin in Louisiana, my aunt, my cousin's best friend, they were all on the line. And my cousin told me, she said, man, we, we have to call Stacy. We need to pray. We have to pray. Call Stacy. And that's what they did. And that's my, my aunt. I remember the time it was about 415, about four, between 415-ish, 430-ish. And she was telling me what had happened. Chris had called it. And I got out of my bed right then. She said, you know, niece, we need to pray. And we prayed over the phone. When I got off that phone with them, we stayed on the phone for a couple of hours. When I got off that phone, I went back into prayer. I said, because God, I, I, I know, I, I feel in my spirit that you're going to answer this prayer different. I know that you are. And however it turns out, God, let your will be done. It's not about what we want. And as we have to understand in life, being a sprinter, we had to go through pain. We had to go through uh, shin splints. We had to go through cramps in our stomachs and legs and feet, toes, eyelashes. We had to go through pain and anguish and throwing up and not eating certain things so that we can uh, uh, get, get the, you know, our bodies can be in shape and so that we can get top speed and we can meet meet speed and so we can perform how we needed to perform in the meat. Oh, we had to put our bodies through a lot. We had to discipline our bodies, train our bodies, and more so we had to train our mind. We had to get our mind right. We had to get our minds together because we knew that each and every track meet, we were running and sprinting against some thoroughbreds. Come on. We were running, running against some Goliaths. We were running, running against girls that look like giants and we look like little bitty ants. So when practice came, we couldn't play. We had to be for real, especially on the relay team. Oh my God. And they kept me on first leg. So I was really in a lot of pressure. Come on here now. Oh my God. What? First leg and fourth leg was always covered. They never had to change it because they knew I was going to bring it in and they knew that Erica Maxwell was going to bring it home. Come on now. If she on the live, if she see me, she know what I'm talking about. The girl was cold. <laughs> Second and third leg, they switched that up probably every week. <laughs> Testing who can, who got more power on what leg. But first and fourth leg, they kept the same girl on it for the whole entire season because they knew that we had power. You got to have power in affliction because no, no matter what you face or who you come against, who you have to run the race against, you may have to face a Goliath. You may have to face a, 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 a giant. You may have to face an opposition. But you have to practice the word. You have to practice, put into practice and put in 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 act into action what god says in his word the discipline has to become stronger than the desire our desire was to go and eat a big old taco salad <laughs> but we know in practice we've been through it all up after one warm up that was our desire, but we knew we had to be disciplined and we had to eat healthy salads and put all that ranch and hot sauce and picante sauce and cheese and sour cream and chips and all of that mixed all up in that gal. And knowing good and well, our stomach couldn't take that come practice. Oh God. 
Come on, somebody. We have to be disciplined and going to bed at night. Don't be up all night with your boyfriend and talking and going on. You come home, eat a healthy dinner. You get your homework done and go to bed. You have to take care of yourself. Get up in the morning, take your vitamins. You have to be disciplined. You have to make it to practice each and every day. In order to get conditioned, you have to condition your mind and condition your body. Same as our spiritual walk. We have to be conditioned. That's another affirmation. My mind and my body will be conditioned to stay on the right path, to get to, to follow the path of life, to get to my destiny, to reach my purpose. The purpose and the destiny God has for me. My mind has to stay conditioned. My body has to stay conditioned. My soul has to stay conditioned spiritually, just like physically. I work out now. I'm 41 years old, but I still work out. I still work my body out. I still try to eat right. I still take my vitamins each and every day. I have to if I want to stay healthy. Right? So we have to get in this word. We have to get in this word. This is our road map to life. Right? This is the field. This is the track. Are we practicing on it? Are we putting it into action? Are we are we are we are we staying de uh, devoted? Are we staying motivated in it? Are we reading it every day? Are we praying the scriptures? Are we practicing living out obedience from the word? Are we doing that? Discipline has to override discipline has to become stronger discipline has to become bigger than our desires resistance turns into surrender resistance of what opposes of what opposes god's instruction turns into surrender you have to resist it. Acts 14 and 22. And then we're going to end it there. Oh, this was good, y'all. I hope you guys are blessed. I hope you guys are being blessed because I am. 14 and 22. It says, strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue constant keep going don't stop continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations many look at what it said in this word many tribulations we must and through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of god So those who submit themselves to Christ's authority and his lordship, right? Those who, what does it say? Who recognize his authority? Who recognize that we should submit unto his authority? Who recognize his authority over our lives? will have a place in God's eternal kingdom. Those who submit must suffer many tribulations along the way. That song, how does it go? Doesn't it like a church song that says, I'm just passing through, I'm just a pilgrim passing through i'm just it's something i'm something passing through i'm gonna look up that song hold on am i uh, i'm just a pilgrim or 
that's all that that's just it just came to me it's is one or the other let me see uh Oh, it is a scripture. First Peter 2 and 11. A pilgrim is a person out of his own country in a foreign land. We live here as co-heirs of the earth with Christ, but we are to live our lives as if we are just passing through on the way to our inheritance. That is the promised land. That is heaven. That is eternal life. But I know there's a song. There's a song that speaks about passing through. I'm just a pilgrim. And I think it derives from that scripture. We're just here, passing through. We're just here. And as we go along the way, we will suffer many afflictions and many tribulations. Living in this world is hostile toward the message and the master. It is hostile towards it. Right? People are losing their lives every day because of the message and the master. He said it. They hated me. So don't think they won't hate you. Many people will be crucified. Many people will die for my name's sake. It's for his name's sake. But we're adding this to our faith. Come on. We're adding this to our faith. So we must engage constantly in spiritual warfare. Oh, my God. Against sin and Satan's power. And hold on to what you've been taught. Hold on to what, what has been given to you. Hold on to it. Think on it. Right? Don't let it go. And this is in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, right? Through many tribulations, our souls will be strengthened, right? And encouraged to continue in the faith. Because there's going to be many that abandon the faith. But we have to continue in the faith, encouraging one another, listening to our leaders, listening to uh, our sisters and our brothers in Christ, right? Praying for one another. That we do not lose hope. That we do not lose the fight. Amen. So I pray that you guys were encouraged. I pray that you guys were encouraged to contend and fight for the faith. I pray that you guys were encouraged to add to your faith. Add to your faith, encouragement, and discipline. Amen? A sound mind. Add to your faith, right? What it takes to run this race. Add to your faith. And it takes discipline. It takes uh, endurance. It takes know-how. It takes knowledge. You never get too old to learn. Amen. You never get too old to learn. So have self-control. You have to turn the other cheek. It's all right. Practice self-control. Have the willingness. Right? So let's pray out. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for what we have learned, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that through you, and what you accomplished here on earth by being in, in a in a in a in a human body, God, that you learned that you you know you succumb to submission and you come to you succumb to obedience through what you suffered, God. And we pray, Lord, that we learn from what we have suffered. We learn that through suffering, God, that we will we can practice obedience. And it is training for us, Father God. For the right time, for the right focus to achieve the result, to achieve good results, 
which is consistency. And it yields good results, God, as we constantly uh, seek it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that it has been instilled in us to heed to your instructions, God, for that is the path of life in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that, Lord, we will keep intact and, 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 and keep in touch, Father God, with you, the word that is alive and active. God, we thank you, Father God, that it cuts into the to, into the bone, into the marrow, into the spirit of our lives, God, into our conscience, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that it is what keeps us and it is what keeps us going. It's what keeps our bodies moving. It's what keeps our minds on the right track. It's what keeps us from uh, derailing into the wrong direction. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you keep us safe and you keep us protected in the name of Jesus. Protect our families, protect our children, protect anyone who's connected to us, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm so glad that you guys tuned in and that you are here for this segment or this series of soul care. This soul care series has been blessing. It's been really blessing. And we're talking about adding to the faith, right? being molded into the truth. Amen. So we'll be back tomorrow night at the same time talking about adding to our faith. We talked about discipline and focus, making it stronger than the desire. Amen. Even when the desire wants to come in and tell us something different and speak to our mind, but we're going to let it know, amen, that it is written that my God will not leave me nor forsake me. It is written right? That I am submitting unto the word that comes out of the mouth of God. It is written, right? Come on. It is written that God is my refuge. He is my light. He lights my path. Amen? It's written. So I pray that you guys be blessed. Study those scriptures tonight before you go to bed. Listen to some, some soft Christian music to help you sleep, right? We have to start taking, it, taking into account what we talk about, who we talk to, and what we listen to when we go to bed, right? That is so, so heavy. It's heavy because that's what brings, you know, certain things that we're not supposed to be looking at or listening to. That's what brings dreams, and that's what brings discomfort, and that's what brings dis-ease. Come on. Amen. So be aware of that. Take heed. Right. See, so guys, be blessed. And I love you guys. This is Minister Anastasia. And we are talking about the soul care, adding to our faith each and every day. Right. We're adding to our faith, keeping it strong, exercising it, disciplining ourselves, disciplining uh, uh, our minds and our bodies and 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 and, and practicing self-control, practicing um what else? What was another one? Having a sound mind. Amen. We're doing it. We are doing it. So you guys be blessed. And I love y'all. I will see you guys tomorrow night. Have a good night's sleep. Take God everywhere you go and consult him in everything that you do. Amen. And you will come out on top. You guys have a good night.